Welcome to the workspace tour for BlackBase Plus. When you first open the program, you'll notice it's made up of three different areas. The first area is over here on the left. This is the navigation panel. Over here in the middle, this is the block viewer. This is where you see all your blocks. And down here below is the note card panel. Now we will talk about these three different sections and then also the toolbars that are incorporated with the different areas. So first let's talk about the navigation panel. Sometimes you'll hear us call it the tree because of the different levels that we have with the different areas in the navigation. Right now we were looking at the BlackBase Plus library. That's with this button selected. The library includes all of the blocks categorized in different categories and subcategories. Then you have the search and then you have what we call favorites. So we'll get into that in a little bit. While you're looking over here, you can close and open categories and select new categories just by clicking in these areas. If you'd like to close this section, you can do that. Just a matter of clicking on the different areas. This view is what you'll see when you first open we have it set up to show the 10 unequal nine patch small center blocks and the 25 squares subcategory. So that's what you'll see when you first open it. You have the ability to change the blocks that you see when you open the program and you can find that option in preferences. Now in this panel, you do have the option to make it wider if you need to. Sometimes you can't see all of the words. So you can expand this view if you needed to see more of the text here. So just click and drag, hover your mouse cursor over this bar and click and drag it to make it wider or smaller. Jumping over to the block viewer, these are this is where the blocks are displayed and you can scroll down through, you can use your keyboard arrow keys to kind of move around and see the different blocks, um, whatever you choose to do. For each category, if you select 25 squares, you can see that up here it's listed. You're in category 10, unequal nine patch small center, which is what we see here. And you're in subcategory 01, 25 squares. And in this category, this subcategory, there are 40 blocks. So you'll always know that there are 40 blocks here. If I change to a different subcategory, if I go to 02, block is squares and rectangles, I can see that there are 22 blocks in this subcategory. So it's kind of a nice way to see how many blocks are included. You can always look right here. So moving over to this area, above the block viewer, you have the display toolbar. Now the display toolbar affects the view of the blocks that you see on your screen. So if I wanted to turn all of the black patch lines off, I can click on this button and now I'm not seeing any of the patch lines. You can view them as outline drawings, grayscale, it's kind of nice to see the different values, and then of course the default color view. Moving over to display, you can change to see the blocks larger, a medium size, small size, and then tiny. The tiny version helps if you have a lot of blocks in a category so you're able to see more on your screen at one time. And this all kind of depends on what your screen size is. That will make a little difference on what you want to see. And then moving over here, the help button will take you to our support website. And then this is your preferences. Now if I click on preferences now, I can show you, this is where your version number is located. So if you ever, if you're not sure which version you're using, you would just click on preferences and you can see here. Um, if you go to display, this is where you choose which category you see when you start the program. Like I mentioned, you can, we start the program with 10 unequal nine patch small center. You can change that to whatever you, you wanna see when you open the program. I like 16.9x, but any of these options would be a good place to start. Um, there are other options in here that you can play around with, so just kind of click through 
and see what else you need. And if you ever need help, this is where you can get direct links to our help support um, or our live chat. That is the display toolbar. So we've learned that this is the navigation panel, this is the block viewer, and this is the display toolbar. Now looking down below, you also have these tools here. This is called the block toolbar. Any option that you choose on this toolbar is dependent upon which block is selected. So if I have this block selected right now and I click add to favorites, that's the block that's going to be added to my favorites. If I choose this block, add it to my favorites. I'm not going to get into printing at this point. There will be other videos and help articles on printing, but I will pull up one of the dialogues. So this is the foundation dialogue and you can see the options. We work in finished sizes. So everything's a finished size and you can set your seam allowance and Black Base Plus will add the seam allowance for you. Um, just play around with these different settings. And again, you can check our other resources for more information about this. Also with exporting, you can export JPEG file, PNG file, and SVG file. What's nice about SVG is if you have a um, fabric cutter, you can choose to export the black templates. And if you do that, you can choose the seam allowance and everything will be exported for you in an SVG file. So you can send it right to your cutter. So that's, that's a nice option. Zoom will just zoom a block larger so that you can see it, see it in more detail. So if I click on this, I can see that selected block in more detail and click close here. Another way to access zoom is to double click on a block. I'm going to get one that's a little bit more. I'll just click on this, this block here. If I double click on it, it also opens the zoom window. Now, like I said, you can click the X to close it on windows. Mac users, you'll be able to click the red dot to close it over here on the left. You can also press the escape key on your keyboard and that'll make the, the window go away as well. So it's kind of fun to just click, view, escape, double click, escape to kind of look through pretty quickly. Another fun feature is the quilt layout. If you click on quilt layout, a window will display showing seven different quilt layouts with your block put into that layout. So right now you're looking at a horizontal layout and it looks like it's one, two, three, four blocks by four blocks. So it's taking that block that you had selected and just inserting it into a layout. If you click through, you can see the different layouts. This is two horizontal with sashing. So this is a three by three horizontal layout with sashing. This is the third layout and this is a horizontal strip layout. You can kind of just click through and just see different different designs. Now these are just for preview. You can't do anything with these, but it's kind of fun to see what possibilities will come about when you set that block into a different layout. And then once this is the seventh layout, and once you get back to the beginning, you can just kind of go through the loop again. Again, you can close it by clicking the X, the red close button for Mac, or escape. So again, that is the block toolbar. Now we've talked about the navigation panel. We've talked about the block viewer. Now the third area is the note card panel and that's down here at the bottom. Now, depending on your screen size, you may want to adjust the note card panel by hovering your mouse over this button here and bringing this up larger. It's completely up to you. So what the note card panel is, is it's taking all the information that Barbara Brackman has gathered in her Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns book and put that information down here. This block that I have selected is has the Brackman ID of 1859D. And if I click on a different block, you can see that that number changes. It does look like all of these blocks in this category are all, oh, that's a 12 by 12. I was gonna say they're all designed at 10 by 10 inches. Um, there is one here that's 12 inches. You just click around, you can see the different options. It's a seven by seven. So you can see the different default block size, but as you know, you can print these blocks at any size you want. So going back, I'm gonna go back to this block. This is block with Brackman ID 1850. It is in 
the 10 unequal nine patch center category. The subcategory is the O3, like duck and ducklings, which you can see that here. And the characteristics of the block, this is what Barbara Brackman has come up with. This is how she categorized these blocks. The block is divided by two horizontal and two vertical seams that form a grid, and the center square in the block is relatively small. So all of the blocks in this category have those same characteristics. So that's kind of fun to look through. Over here under published names, these are all of the names that this block has been given. Clearly this one has a ton of names. Now if I click on this one over here, this only has one name called Greek Cross by Capper's Weekly. Back here, this is called the Crow's Nest, Aeroplane, the Broad Axe, Hens and Chickens, it goes on and on and on. There are a ton of names for this specific block. Now, if you click on a name, you can see the reference information for Kansas City Star. So all of that information is here and you can click through and see the different reference information for each one of these sources. These are all Wallace Farmers, Orange Judd Farmer, the information is here. So if you're into very historical information or you want to know who originally gave, gave this block that name, that information is right here. Again, all collected by Barbara Brackman. Now we've gone over the three areas of the workspace. I do want to touch on a couple different things in regards to um, this navigation panel over here. Like I said, when you add to favorites, you can see a heart gets added to favorites. But over here on the left, this is where you can view all of the blocks that you've added to your favorites. You click on that, you can see all of these blocks. This is the one I just added to my favorites, but I've also added these here. Continue to collect as many blocks as you want. There's a there's over 4,000 blocks in Block Base Plus, so you don't wanna have to scour through all of them all the time to look for the block that you want. So add them to your favorites, they're here, and if you ever decide, I don't like this block anymore, I don't want it in my favorites, just select it and click Remove from Favorites, and it'll go away. One thing that I really love about this program is I have this block in my favorites right now, but I don't know where it belongs. I can see it's in 16.9x and then like double Z and I can go and find it in the library, but I don't wanna have to go dig for it. So if I select it, I can click view in library and it's gonna take me back over to the block based library with that category selected and that block selected. So I can see the other blocks in that same category just by clicking the view in library button here. So let me do that again. I'll do that for this block here. This is block 2793. And now I want to find other blocks with these same characteristics. I'll click view in library. And now this block is still selected over here in the library. And I can see all the other blocks that have the similar characteristics as that. So that's a really fun fun tool to use. And the last thing in the navigation panel is the search. This is a very robust search feature. You can search by Brackman ID. If you have Barbara's Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns book, you can use, you know, look up any block that you find in there by typing in the block Brackman ID here. So let's see one one. Now I found this block and now I can go view it in the library. If I would like to I'll click that over here, see this block is selected. So that was an easy way for me to find that block. And now I'm finding all the other blocks in that category. You can search by published name. You can type in a name. Let's say you want to type in churn dash or I can just type in churn and hit search. There's that block we looked at earlier. And then all of these other blocks have the word churn in one, at least one of the names. So that's how you do that. Or you can actually click through and select the name over here. Category search. This is really fun because you can go through and select as many of these categories as you want to get really unique results of the blocks in the program. So click through, find the different types of blocks you want and click search. And then finally source. These are the different sources that originally published these blocks. So now you can click through the different sources here to see which publication first originally published those blocks. 
So Aunt Kate's Quilting Bee published 88 of the blocks in the program. So that's really cool. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is just the menu. Um, you'll notice if you're using a Mac computer, you would do have the Block Base Plus menu up here instead of just File and Help. And under the Block Base Plus, you will find this information. Um, under the Help menu, you under the File menu, you will see these these options. And then if you ever need help, you can click on any of these options here. We do have a Quick Start guide if you want to to view the on-screen tour that showed up when you first opened the program you can click on that and click through those screens as well if you have any questions you can check our website uh, we have a lot of support materials plus you can use our live chat send us an email or give us a call